what is going on everybody um so i've had quite a few questions people asking to do some fly tying and whatnot and there's a lot of fly tying videos out there so i'm not going to really go and just do the same thing but what i'm going to do is kind of share a couple of my own patterns that i've kind of developed over the years most of these patterns are based off of other patterns that are already out there but they're just tweaks and variations and whatnot just you know like Nowadays, you almost can't come up with anything that's extremely brand new. Um, so what we have in the vise here is a size 12, big T, claw point hook. This hook is really good for just general use. I like these hooks because they're relatively inexpensive. Um, and they're good quality hooks. This is a size 12 and a four millimeter tungsten bead. This is a bigger pattern. I don't fish flies this big very often. Um, but what it's called is the grave digger. And this pattern is based off of a big hare's ears basically with a rubber leg tail and some CDC. So nothing super fancy, but it's a fly that I use a lot in high water conditions. I use it for bigger stalkers and just smaller stalkers. I jig it a lot, kind of like a small streamer. It's just a good all-around pattern when you need to either get down in high water or you just need something to get down there and bounce through a pot of fish that aren't really wanting to eat. So what we're using for thread is some red Semperfly, ADOC Classic Waxed. Any kind of red thread will do. doesn't really matter. Um, just like any other fly, you're going to start this thing right up at the bead. And you're going to take that thread all the way down to the back of the hook, about to where the barb on the hook would be if it had a barb. You're just going to clip that off, put the scissors back. Next thing we're going to do is take some of this uh, sexy floss or any kind of rubber leg material that isn't like curled. So this is a straight rubber leg material. I like tying this pattern with either tan. Or you can use the barred legs from like the Montana Fly Company stuff. And what you want to do is just take, cut some of that relatively short length. I don't use a long tail on this fly. And I'm going to wrap the thread back up to the bead. I'm going to take this material, wrap it around the thread, and kind of get it almost even. It doesn't have to be exact because I might trim it. I'm just going to lay that on top. I'm going to take these thread wraps. Try to keep that as on top as I can get. And right here toward the end, I'm really going to cinch down. That's going to help splay those tails apart. And it's going to kind of point them upwards a little bit. And I'll just tuck a couple wraps up and then back down. This fly is pretty bulky, so I'm not worried about, you know, keeping this thing as a thin profile as you can have it. My uh, backdrop keeps falling here. It's just a piece of paper. Next up for the rib, I'm going to use some sparkle braid in the mid size in this root beer color. This gives a nice semi flashy rib. Same thing, we're going to go up to the bead. We're going to tie this in, make a couple loose wraps, and then just kind of pull it down a little bit. Most of this thread wraps will push that down behind the slotted bead take it right up there and then you're done with the rib for now next up we're just going to use some of this dubbing I can't quite remember what dubbing this is I got a, a binder like a card binder with dubbing in it and so I don't remember the names of it but any kind of natural synthetic dub mix and a tan or brownish color will do i like this dub and i use this a lot for my waltz arms I, I cannot remember the name of it though and for this you don't want to use a ton of it i keep it relatively thin but just dub that on there it's kind of hard the way i have my camera set up it's literally right in front of me so it's hard to dub this on but there you go. Dub that up like a pretty sparse noodle. 
don't have to be super thin but you don't want it so bulky that you can't do nothing with it and we're just going to take these wraps touching each other and just build this up the body you'll notice right here i didn't dub it on quite thick enough or tight enough rather so i'm just going to do that it ain't pretty it works though sometimes i actually prefer to do this on my bigger bugs that way so the more this fly gets chewed on the more that stuff starts coming out of there and the better it looks the more buggy it looks i'm gonna pack this on there a little tighter i'm gonna thread up a little bit this will give a little bit of a taper as you can see it kind of just looks like a big waltz worm with a tail at this point now we're going to take that rib and just wrap it up. I know you hear all the time you need to counter wrap it and stuff. I don't never counter wrap. I just do this. It works just fine. They say it's for durability in the fly. And over my years of experience with doing this, that fly is probably going to fall apart or get lost anyways. So it really doesn't matter. You know, you get about 20, 30 fish into a fly, it doesn't matter how well it's tied, usually something's going to start coming off of it, but you get 30 or 40 fish out of a fly, I'm impressed because most of the time you're not going to keep that fly that long, you're probably going to lose it in the tree. Next up for the collar, or under collar, some black peacock dub. Take a decent amount, just enough to make a good rib, or a good collar. Again, dub that on there fairly loose just to give that nice buggy profile take a couple good locks right in front of it next up we're gonna go with some tan CDC this is where this fly really starts taking shape when you're selecting the CDC you want a fairly long piece you don't want a real short piece and it doesn't necessarily have to be the thickest piece ever, just a fairly long piece. That way, so you got something to work with. You know, tie that in on top, make a couple good locking wraps over it. And then I'm going to trim fairly close to that. Leave a little bit of a tag hanging out. That way, so if it decides to slip on you. Um, I had hackle pliers, but I kind of lost them. Well, that just slipped out on me. Let's do that again. Yeah, I had to hackle pliers, but I lost them. I actually think I left them somewhere. Just going to take this, pull it back, do about two wraps with this. Don't need a ton. Just enough to get that CDC wrapped around the shank. You're going to take it right there. Lock that in real good. Cinch down on it. Cut it. Pull those fibers back, and then you're just going to build up a red hot spot for your collar. Just cover up all the excess. I'm not the best fly tire or the prettiest fly tire on the planet, but these flies catch fish, and that's all that matters. Now I'm just going to look at my tail. It's a little off center, so I'm just going to trim it, line it up, leave the tail decent length. That way, so when you're fishing it, it will move around. And you're going to cut your thread, do a whip finish, or when I was a kid learning how to tie flies, I did a half hitch knot. I didn't know what a whip finish was, so I actually do this and half hitch the thread around. If you have a whip finisher tool or you know how to do it, just do a whip finish, whatever's faster. This is just what I did as a kid. I'll do this about three or four times. Then I'll just kind of push it down, make sure I, I feel that thread pull down on itself. Break that thread off, and there you go. That is a finished grave digger fly.